Uh, before a guideline, what teacher has to do is you observe. Hopefully, it's a five full days. Lah. So if you are just two hours with a kid and you see something, um, you just see for a month, it's not enough. That is just like 10 hours. So it can't really tell you a lot. So um, by how psychologists would observe a kid is they actually would do a five day and say half a day or a full day to observe how the kid behave to able to tell how he behaves. So first teacher, you do your observation first and not just one off, one off, I see him walking past, screaming past, one moment. No, that is not an accurate observation. So take your time, especially teachers that you, you say on Sunday, Sunday school, you see the kid for two hours, you maybe need to observe this kid for months to see whether there's a changes, the consistency. Then the guideline that we all will suggest, uh, clinical psychologists or child psychologists would actually suggest you is to follow DSM-5. DSM is like the psychologist dictionary to refer to different kind of disorders, even for children. So there are very clear uh, statements being given. Autism, what is the least of criteria? Uh, you say uh, dyslexic children, what is their criteria? So you can check it online. DSM can be downloaded. Try to find the one that is for free. Lah. Got one, got one. <laughs> so go and refer that first. Then you go and see whether your kid matches this. Then you almost can tell, okay, but we are not professionals, right? So don't label, don't jump. You can just say, I think the kid has something that is very similar to this. And then you can discuss with your teachers because your teachers will be able to see or not. Sometimes you see it, your teachers don't think it is. Then, okay, maybe it's not. Then if you see that the things hmm, are very similar already, like what Swansi says, you have to have a relationship with the parent, only you can break it. If not, don't go and do it. If not, people will just want to gun you off. You will say, some things about people's children, it's yeah. very helpful. Lah. So if you don't have a relationship and you're suspecting something, start to build a relationship with the parents. Talk to them, how are you? How, uh, how's your child? Um, how old is he? Is he going to school yet? You can start to build a relationship even prior to wanting to break the news. Lah. If somebody that is very close to them, that's also a teacher, perhaps pass the job to uh, that more experienced or closer teacher to, to go to the parents. Lah. I think it's a more PR way to do it. Yeah, because at the end of the day, we are not trying to uh, say, oh, your kid has this and we don't want to accept. It's more yeah. like we are on the same page that, oh, our kid has this challenge and how as teachers and parents, we're going to work together to make them transition into, say, our Sunday school better or our teachers has um, a special note that we have that with this child, we would we have a, a more special way to treat him instead of wanting him to just fit in that model. You see, we all learn about social model, right? So when we go into a class setting, teachers, you have a mindset to know that, okay, our kid has um, a special uh, learning abilities in this. How can we treat that all the teachers are on the same page? And we are wanting the parents to be on our same page as well so that we can better serve our child. I think so for the teachers, uh, normally what we need to do is uh, uh, instead of like, yeah, just looking at the DSM-5 and all that, uh, I think so practical things like, is there any changes at home? Uh, is there any changes, you know, for parents, you know, in terms of work, uh, in terms of siblings, did they just move house? Um, uh, did something happen in school uh, or neighbourhood? Or There are a lot of things that you need to ask first before you actually break the news because once you break the news, then then a lot of worries will come, right? So, so get to know the family first and then also to ask like okay what are the changes that may have triggered uh, or so the new food new types of uh, sometimes it's what they watch on TV that triggers certain behavior we are thankful for you know the teachers uh, who still faithfully you know uh, teach still faithfully and patiently because it takes a lot of patience to care for them because they sometimes they cannot understand or they throw tantrums or they break things or they tear, tear the books or eat the books or you know all kinds of things so so it's a lot of patience just keep loving them keep teaching them keep you know uh, doing the observation so that we because you observe enough you will know what is the pattern and you will know what soothes that child and then you will know what to do and you can share with the parents because uh, when the parents and the teachers are doing the same thing it helps the child to calm down a lot more